One morning this week, it must have been Thursday, uh, it was hours before daylight, and uh, there was a, a thought, there was a, just a part of a sentence that came to my mind. I had just read it uh, just a, a day or two before, and uh, I, as I began to uh, think about it, I, I was musing on it, and the Lord gave me a sermon I want to bring to you this morning, and probably finish it up tonight, but I want us to look in Psalm 38, and uh, this is a song, a psalm, and of course all the psalms were songs, and uh, of David, uh, Psalm 38, he said, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure, for thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. Mine iniquities are gone over my head as an heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. Now, beloved, I'm glad this morning that God does not give us what we deserve. I'm glad that we do. We are not recipients of what should be coming our way. I'm glad this morning for the grace of God. I'm glad for the grace of God. Can anybody say amen this morning? Don't leave me up here by myself now. I'm glad this morning for God's grace. Sin, uh, beloved, uh, condemns and sin, beloved, defiles. And the Bible tells us, David said here, he said, you haven't chastened me. Uh, like you should. I have not received uh, the punishment for my sin like I should. And I'm glad none of us have got what we deserve. If God gave us what our lives deserve, he'd break our backs and throw every one of us into hell. It's the grace of God that we are what we are. It is the grace of God that we can be who we are this morning. And it's God's grace, God's unmerited favor, beloved, that allows us to be able to walk and, and conduct our affairs and him not uh, send us to an awful, horrible place called hell. But I want you to look down at verse number 18. He said, I will declare my iniquity, for I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Seven words. If you have a, a pencil or a pen or a highlighter, let me encourage you to underline the last seven words in verse 17. I will be sorry for my sin. You know, it, it seems today that people aren't sorry for their sin. People can do you wrong. People can cheat you, and people can hurt you, and people can harm you, and they, they go on about their business, and they never come back and say, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I'm sorry for what I said to you. I'm sorry for the way that I treated you. And beloved, it's sad today, the reason most people don't do that is because they're full of pride. Their pride won't let them say, I'm sorry. Their pride won't let them say, I was wrong. Their pride won't let them say, will you forgive me? But I don't care who you are this morning, everybody, everybody, everybody in this auditorium or watching online, we are all sinners and all of us stand condemned by God Almighty because of our sin. Oh, but where sin abounded, Grace did much more abound. I say amen, thank God, hallelujah, for the grace of God that reached down into the muck and mire of sin and lifted me up, lifted me out. Oh, thank God today, I'm saved, washed white by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be sorry for my sin. I wonder this morning, are we sorry for our sin? We go through life. Beloved, many people 
Many people stand back and they, they, they demand and they expect God to meet and supply their needs. Listen to me. Beloved, every good thing in our life has been given to us by God Almighty, but he is not obligated to do one blessed thing for us. He, he has not signed a contract with any of us. He's our heavenly father and he's obligated himself. But beloved, there's no law. There's nothing that we can come and say, God, you owe me this. No, sir. No, sir. Beloved, God is not abound except by his own word to do anything for us. But now the word, he said, I'll be sorry. What does the word sorry mean? It means to be broken down with sorrow for sin. It means to, uh, sorrow means humbly and thoroughly penitent. You know, I can remember when I first started preaching and uh, it's been many years ago, I, I would see people come to the altar and you would see them weep with bitter tears. They were, they were sorry for their sin. They were sorry for what they've done. They were sorry that they violated God's law. And all they wanted, all they wanted was, was to have that fellowship with the Lord restored. And you'd see them in the altar and they'd weep and they'd cry and they'd talk to God. They were broken down with sorrow for sin. They felt bad for what they had done. They were feeling guilty for breaking God's law. But beloved, it seems to today like people can break God's law and do wrong and it just doesn't bother them at all. They go on about their life. They go on about their living. They never stop. They're never sorry. They, ne they never come clean with God. David said, I will be sorry for my sin. Now, beloved, this morning, sorry, broken down with sorrow for sin. What is sin? Sin is defined in Webster's as the transgression of the law of God. It is to violate the divine law by actual misdeeds, crime, or trespasses or by neglect. To violate the divine law by actual misdeeds or crimes or to violate the divine law by neglect. Now, beloved, this morning, this morning, I want us to look for just a minute on what David said, I will be sorry for my sin. Now, beloved, you and I aren't going anywhere with the Lord until we're willing and able to come clean with God. To come clean with God. Now, you know, my children, when we were raising them, we'd get after them, and sometimes we would punish them for things they did, only to find out that there were other things that they did, probably worse than what we punished them for. I, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they took our little dog and put her in the dryer one time, and we wondered why every time Mama opened the dryer door, she took off running in uh, the other direction, and uh, things they did to their little brother, and uh, what have you, they, they, uh, they never really came clean. And beloved, today, I, I'm afraid that we go through life and we have a little talk with Jesus in the morning, and we throw up some little prayer, but we, we never get alone in the presence of God. We never take time to get in the presence of God. And you know why some of us don't do that? You know why some of us don't take time to pray? Don't take time to get alone with God? You know why we do it? It's because we know when we do, we've gotta come clean. You can't hide from God. You can't masquerade with God. You can't play your little parlor games with God. God knows this morning exactly who we are and what we've done and where we've been. He's heard every word we've said. He knows our thoughts that are on evil. God knows us this morning. And if we're gonna have fellowship with him, we're gonna have to get alone. And when we get alone, that's when the convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God gets so strong. Now, 
It's not often, but from time to time, Mrs. Dean and I will get in a row and we will we'll have a, a fight. And as I said, don't happen often, maybe no more than three or four times a day. And uh, we, uh, we'll have a, a fight. And uh, sometimes we'll say things that we shouldn't say. And sometimes we act ways we shouldn't act. And uh, so we're going about our business, we're going about our day. But when we finally get alone with that person, there's an elephant in the room. We can sit and we can small talk and we can chit chat, but we know it's sitting there staring us. I've, I've got to ask forgiveness. I said, some, I said something ugly to her. I treated her in a bad way. I acted in a bad way and I need to get this straightened out. Now, most of the time it's her asking me to forgive her and uh, being the good Christian I am, I forgive her over and over and over and over again. And, uh, but no, we, we, we have, to get it, have to get it right. That's why the Bible said, let not the, uh, to married couples, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed mad. Don't, don't go to bed upset with somebody. Listen to me, while you're sleeping, the devil will grow that thing and when you wake up in the morning, some little insignificant nothing is gonna be a great big ball and chain that you're gonna carry around. That's why God said don't go to bed angry. Let not the sun go down on your ass. Miss Dean and I committed to that. We wouldn't go, we wouldn't uh, let the sun go down on our wrath. We wouldn't go to bed angry. And far as I know, we never have. One time we stayed up three days and nights and didn't go to bed, but anyway, we got things worked out. I'm saying this morning, when we, when we transgress the law of God, when we violate his law, beloved, there's only one way to renew and restore that fellowship, and that is to come clean with God. I wonder this morning how many of us are really sorry for our sins. Are we really sorry how we let God down? Are we really sorry when we violate his law? Now I've told you what sin was, but let me give you real quickly three things that sin is not. Number one, sin is not a mistake. Sin is not a mistake. Beloved, things weren't done on purpose. Sometimes we do things and uh, we, uh, by mistake, we may say something and we're not meaning to hurt. We're not meaning to bring any trouble, but we, we say the wrong thing. It was just a mistake. And uh, that's not sin. God does not judge us for our mistakes. All of, no, nobody's perfect and people make mistakes. Just things that happen, things that we do, not on purpose to hurt somebody just by mistake. So a mistake is not sin. Number two, an accident is not sin. An accident is not sin. We have no control over it. If we accidentally hurt someone, if we accidentally cause trouble. We can't control what happens accidentally. So sin is not a mistake. Sin is not an accident. And then get this down, number three, and this is so vital. Listen to me now. Sin is not temptation. I remember back in Virginia, I had a fellow come to me, hadn't been saved long, he and his wife, and he came to me and he said, Preacher Dean, you've got to pray for me. He said, I'm having the most horrible time. And uh, he had been a drunkard and had been uh, abusive. But God saved him and God changed him. <clears throat> and I, I baptized he and his wife in our church. And we sat down and I said, well, tell me what's going on. And he told me how that he was tempted to do wrong. He was tempted to stop and get a six pack of beer. He was tempted to fly off the handle and say an ugly word to his wife. He was tempted to slam the door because he was mad. And I said, did you buy a six pack? Did you say an ugly word? Did you slam the door? He said, oh no, 
I was just tempted to do it. And he said, I've got to confess my sin. Temptation is not sin. The Bible said Jesus was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. If, it, if temptation is sin, then Jesus sinned and we know Jesus could not. Jesus did not sin. So being tempted to do wrong is not sin. It's when we yield to that temptation. It's when we give in to that temptation. That's where the sin comes. Now you may, you may be hard up for money. And you may not be, you, you paid your bills and you have no money left. And you're, what few dollars you have, you're down at Walmart trying to buy some food, trying to get some things, and uh, you have no money. And you see something that you really need. And you know you can't buy it, you can't afford it right now. But you need it and you want it so badly. So the demon comes and sits on your shoulder and says, well, just stick it in your pocket. You've spent thousands of dollars at this Walmart over your life and one little item's not gonna hurt. One little item's not gonna matter. Walmart won't miss it. You need it. You don't have the money for it. So stick it in your pocket. Just forget about it. Stick it in your pocket and forget about it and go on. Now, that's temptation. And beloved, that's not sin to be tempted. Now, temptation's all around us. But when you take that that does not belong to you and you put it in your pocket and you walk out of the store and you don't pay for it, you've just sinned in the eyes of God and in the eyes of man. The temptation is not sin. It's yielding to that temptation. It's giving in to that temptation. Hey, listen, sin is not a mistake. Sin is not an accident, and sin is not temptation. Now, the Bible tells us there are two types of sin. I want you to get this, and we'll close. Number one, the first type of sin is the sin of commission. The sin of commission. That means to do wrong, and we know that the, the sins of commission are doing wrong. Commission, we get the word commit. We have committed this sin. Turn with me real quickly over to the book of Romans and chapter three. Romans chapter three. Romans chapter three. <clears throat> Romans three. Look at verse 10. As it is written, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Do you see that? It's in black and white. As it is written, there is none righteous. And in case we say, well, that means just about it. No, he said not even one. Look across the page. Verse 23, for all, all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Beloved, the first type of sin that we, can, we cannot do is the sin of commission. That's to do wrong. That is to break God's law. Thou shalt not steal Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And uh, down, down through, thou, thou shalt not kill. We, when we violate God's law, when we commit sin, we do things that we should not do. And God tells us we shouldn't do it. That is the sin of commission. But number two... There is not only the sin of commission, but there is the sin of omission. Omission. Now, commission is to do the wrong thing. Omission is to not do the right thing. So see, sin is not just doing bad. Sin is also not doing good. We sin when we do wrong. That's the sin of commission. 
But listen, it is just as much a sin. It is just as rotten in the eyes of God when we don't do those things that we know that we're supposed to do. Turn with me over to the book of James. James chapter number four. James chapter four. If you've got a Schofield Bible, it's 1309. 1309. James four. <clears throat> James four. 1309 in your Schofield Bible. Look at James four. Look at down at verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is what? It's sin. It's sin. When you know, when you know what's right to do and you don't do it, it's sin. It's sin for you and it's sin for me. When we don't do what we know God wants us to do. Now, beloved, people today, people today, they, they brag about how they don't lie and cheat and steal and murder and commit adultery and, and, and covet their neighbor's goods. Oh, I, I'm a great Christian. I don't do this. Well, that's fine. But let me ask you a question. Are you doing what God wants you to do? We, we know today that God wants to meet with us every day. He wants us to read our Bible, study to show yourself approved unto God. He wants us to pray, pray without ceasing. These are commandments of God. He means for us to meet with him. He desires to meet with us. He wants us to meet with us so he can fellowship and, and he can help us. But we get up late, we race through the day, we come in and we're so tired and we eat and watch a little something and then we go to sleep and we've, we've gone a whole day and never said good morning, Lord. Never talked to God. Never spent five minutes in his presence and talking with him. Listen to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him. It is sin. Just a few minutes, we'll pass these offering uh, baskets. And you know that God's blessed you and you know God commands 10% of your income to be giving in tithes. And then he, he means for you to give more than that in offerings, right? like for our missionaries or for the radio or whatever, to him that knoweth to do good. You say, well, that's an Old Testament command, preacher. No, you're showing your ignorance of the Bible. Hey, a tithing was started before the law ever came about. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek before Moses was ever born. Then the law came and the law demanded it. But then in the New Testament, Jesus said, speaking of the Pharisees, he said they have their Pharisaical phylacteries. They write their prayers and, and put them in a little pouch on their head. He said they fast. He said they tithe and so they should. Jesus said, you're to tithe. And yet that plate goes by and you hold it. You've robbed from God. You've taken the life that he's given you. You've taken the help that he's given you. And, and uh, you know you're to give. You know you're supposed to give. But you don't do it to him to know it to do good and doeth it not. To him it is sin. There are calls that he wants us to make. There are visits that he wants us to make. There are things that he wants us to do and he leads us to do them and he tells us he wants us to do them but yet we don't. We're too busy or too tired or too proud or too whatever to do what God's told us to do. To him, to knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So sin is not just committing sins, doing wrong, but there's also sins of omission when we don't do what we should do. Now this morning I've given you an introduction to sin and what it is and what it's not and two types of sin. I want to talk to you, Lord willing, tonight on why we should be sorry for our sins. I'm going to give you three reasons quickly tonight on why we should be sorry for our sins. Father, I pray that you'll help us now. I've done my best to preach what you've laid on my heart. 
I know not who it's for. I haven't preached it to one person. God, I, I'm, uh, Lord, uh, the recipient of this message as much as anybody here. And I just pray you'll help us now this morning to be what we're supposed to be. God, you've been so good to us. You've blessed us. You've saved our soul from a devil's hell. You've kept our soul saved from a devil's hell. You've touched us. You've healed us. You've given us strength. You've given us food to eat. You've given us a nice place to stay. You've given us a comfortable pillow to put our head on at night. And God, we've taken and we've taken and we've taken. Oh God, help us. Help us to truly be thankful for how good you've been and help us to be faithful to you. Oh God, would you take out any sin that may be in our lives. Convict us of it. Help us to be sorry for it. And help us to get clean. To do right. In Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. Nobody's moving. I wonder how many of you here this morning say, Brother Dean, I'm saved and I know it. And if I drop dead 